Oh, I'm excited to start talking about some job excitement, how to become a job interview virtuoso and why it's one of the most bang for the buck skills you could ever acquire. What up fam? Dr. James W. Stalkup, AKA Jimmy Joe Coltrane. I'm like the Jerry, the King Lawler of making you a baller. And today we're going to talk about job excitement. Look, job interview proficiency is a skill that anyone can acquire and you can acquire it really fast. You can go from noob to master faster in job interviewing than in any other skill you could have. For example, noob to chess grandmaster, noob to concert pianist, noob to doctor. Yo, those take a long time. That's really hard to do. But noob to job interview virtuoso or whatever you would call it, job interview master, that is a very fast process, and here's why. Nobody's trying. Way less than 5% of people ever practice for a job interview, so if you're the guy or gal who's out there practicing, you're probably going to beat them. I talk about a student that I had that went into an interview where on paper it was somewhere between one in 2,700 and one in a million odds. He landed three jobs in a row. The reason was there was no competition for him. There was nobody able to interview on that level. You can have that. So what happens if you're great at job interviewing? Is it a hobby? Is it something fun you do? No, it's probably the best way to improve your life. I like the term job excitement because all the time we focus on money. Even the little intro, Jerry the King Lawler of making you a baller, we focus on money. What can you buy? What things can you have? How about how happy can you be? Yo, you want a job with a better schedule? You got to be able to out interview the other people who want that job. You want a job that has more time off for travel? You got to be able to beat the other people who want that job. I will promise you that there's nothing else you can do in life. Maybe buy Bitcoin when it first came. There's nothing else you can do in life that for that much effort, you can acquire the things you desire. Whether those things are material goods like cars and houses, whether those things are investments, or whether those things are time to travel, a better schedule, stop working the third shift. It is no secret. I make videos for folks who want to get jobs. That's my target audience. Hey, Coltrane, what's your target audience? Yo, it's anybody who wants to get a job. And when you look at the analytics for my videos and my blog, you find that the lower income, the lower you go down the income ladder, the more engagement I have in my videos. Good. That's who I want to help. Have I helped people land jobs? I've helped people land extremely big jobs, but I'm a lot happier when somebody goes from not having a job to having a job. That's the excitement. That's the job excitement. Nailing a job interview, walking out of a job interview and saying there's not another human being on this planet that could beat me, that's a great feeling. Do you think there's anybody on earth who can out interview the Coltrane? I don't know. I'd like to see. I don't know how we'd see, but I'd like to see. Job interview mastery is easier than other kinds of mastery. Look at how hard it is to master a manual skill. Like if you start framing houses right now, you go out and you apprentice with someone and you learn how to frame houses. How long do you think you're going to frame houses before you're going to be one of the best in your field? How long do you think it's going to take someone to pick up the phone and call you and say, Hey, I heard you were the best framer. I want you to start doing these high end custom homes. That may take a long time. You may have to frame a lot of houses. Manual skills that make you money are very, very, very hard. But a 20-minute interview can make you a fortune. Job excitement. Do you think people know how to do virtual interviews now that we're in the COVID era? Do you think that they set up studio lighting? Do you think that they have proper sound equipment? Do you think that they frame everything right? Do they know how to join the meeting? Do they know how to fail over the phone if they can't join the meeting? These are all things that I can teach you very quickly. Somebody asked me one time, they said, what do you think job interviewing is similar to? And I said, well, I don't know. What do you think it's similar to? And they said, I think it's similar to being a salesman. You're kind of selling yourself. And I was like, yo, you are whack. If your brain thinks that that's a thing, that's not a thing. Well, Coltrane, why? It seems like you're selling something. Salesmen are in competition with other salesmen. Why? Because a whole lot of people sell things for a living. For example, surgical hardware. It's very hard to become a surgical hardware salesperson because people who sold medications, those jobs kind of went away. And so everybody moved from selling prescription medications to selling surgical hardware. It's a lot of competition. That's a shared skill set. And I bet the people who are good at, and I bet the people who are good at selling hardware could probably walk onto a car lot and sell a car. But they all have to compete with each other and they're all trying. Guess what? In a job interview, hardly anyone is trying. 
Can you imagine being in a sales competition with a group of salesmen who didn't care if they sold well? That's what's happened with job interviewing. And I got to be honest, I think it's getting worse. I always forget to say it. Click like and click subscribe. I feel like every video I do is getting a little bit better. Also, the full interview dynamics job interview course, start to finish everything you need to know, including virtual interviews. The link to that is in the description. Um, for the price of one season of The Sopranos on VHS, you can go out and get the skills to get the job that you want. Click the notification bell too. I'm going to try to publish two videos a week and you don't want to miss out when one drops. Leave me a comment if there's anything inflammatory, any opportunities for me to improve or anything you would like to add to this video. All right, fam. You know, I said I was going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to shout out everybody who commented on the last video in this video. First off, we got Brent Giroux. Brent has a great comment that he put on the video about anxiety. Uh, and he ended it with, Thinking in my head that I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, this is good. We got three comments to shout out today. So Brent Giroux made a very good point. This cycle of uncertainty in your head is very, very disruptive in a job interview. Feeling like you don't know what you're talking about and it manifests itself by running long in answers. Now this is legitimate, good critique, good content right here, right? That, that, that cycle, you'll hear me say a, a, a cycle, and it leads to freestyling. It leads you to feel uncertain and feel like if you talk more, um, that that's going to improve it. So I've got a video called Land the Plane in the Answer. I like a story arc that goes start to finish and then stops. Memorizing content is a great way to deal with this. If you memorize content, you're going to be much less likely to have that self-doubt and to run long. So excellent comment, um, Brent. Next up is Max Avery. This is a, a great uh, content, 100% spot on. I like it. It's laconic, it's poignant, and dude, your profile picture looks like you're some sort of Bond villain, so good for you, handsome guy. All right, let's move along. Brian H., I've interviewed a lot of candidates, and I can tell you that you're spot on with this advice. Uh, then there's some more, so first off, thanks, Brian H. Um, now, this is kind of interesting because I don't want to disagree with the comment, but this is this is where we're going. So, um, Brian H. drops, Marcus Aurelius repeated that the people whose opinion we covet are not that great. Yo, so obviously Brian H. knows I'm a stoic and he's going to put Marcus Aurelius in there and then you think I'm going to agree with him, which is true to a point. But then he says... Do you want to act your way into a role with the company? I'd say it's better to be who you really are. Yo, we're going to have to talk about this. So Brian H., I do not agree with that. And here's why. Uh, it's the semantics of being who you really are. So, yo, you can't be yourself in a job interview. I don't know what you're into. Maybe you're into, you know, deer hunting or something like that. And I can go to your deer camp when you're sitting around a campfire and really being yourself. Yo, you don't look like that in a job interview. You're not talking to them like that. That's not, you can't be yourself in that job interview. So you're going to be a different version of yourself while you're in there. And my argument is you can't truly be yourself. You can only be an ineffective interviewer. So if we agree that you can't actually show your true self, who was the, uh, wasn't there a philosopher that said something like everybody has a, like a professional self or everybody has a public self, a private self and a secret self. Like you're not going to be yourself in there. So let's just all agree that if you can't be yourself, you should probably practice and be the absolutely most endearing person that you could be. Once again, this is kind of, I'm picking at the semantics a little bit, but you get where I'm going with that. But thank you very much for the comments. So on this video, any comment that's placed within the first 24 hours, I will shout you out the next video. Give me criticism, critique, whatever. You can be positive, you can be negative, and I will address it the next video. Thanks for watching.